This is basically a improvisational robot. So uh, instead of playing with a piano player, I play with the computer, and the computer is playing a disc clavier. Now the computer has only one ear, that's the microphone. I play in the microphone and the, uh, the data, incoming data uh, controls a, co a composition program that's running at the same time. So it actually communicates with what I'm doing live on my saxophone. Um, yeah, let, let me just play. If you have questions, I can hear them later.
many different algorithms uh, and even I made a few stylistic uh, elements that, uh, that sometimes pop up and, uh, uh, and those uh, stylistic elements for instance can be manipulated uh, by my saxophone as well. For instance you heard uh, there was a small jazz section somewhere in the, in the piece uh, but it also it can play boogie woogie it has a, a tango uh, uh, area in it and also, and, and then there are many uh, uh, algorithms that I use and that uh, uh, make variations on what I what I play. There's this kind of uh, uh, Pierre Boulez kind of algorithm. You might have heard. There's a, a canon structure. I think there are several ways of playing uh, chords into the program, and uh, yeah, it, it, uh, also the, the order it, it tries to uh, understand also what I'm doing. Yeah, so, yeah. so you get a sort of uh, interaction in the sense that uh, it, it can get bored at some time as well. <laughs> if, when I play too long the same thing, then it can think, okay. Uh, this was uh, was enough. Now I, I want to do something entirely different. So then it tries to push me into different areas. But what are the choices? Um, where does he, where does the choices come from? 
that you like if you just for example something completely new it, it comes from nowhere where does the idea the well it, it tries to uh, it focus uh, the intelligence focus on the also on mainly on a macro structure I mean the, the pitches uh, of course and the intervals play a, a certain role but it also looks at, uh, at the macro structures for instance uh, uh, it can uh, measure if you play uh, Using a, a big register on your instrument, or only like a, a very small, uh, it, it can uh, recognize whether you play along of uh, repeats of the same notes. <coughs> if there are certain uh, certain intervals that play a lot, uh, uh, are happening a lot, uh, it, it can, of course, it can see whether you play long notes or short notes. Uh, so it also looks at the, uh, some, uh, at the textures of the of the music. Um, and then, of course, it's a bit dull when it constantly starts to imitate me. That's uh, that's why I also gave it uh, so, uh, something harsh in it. That, uh, it's just like a, like a real musician. You know, you have to get too used to it. And sometimes, when you improvise with people, they don't do what you want. And it's, it's I think it's very important with a computer program like that as well. That it has these harsh elements and. Not <coughs> always do what you would like to do. So what computer programs are you using for this? Hmm? What computer programs are you using? I use, uh, uh, I, I write in Max MSP. Uh, I used to do it in, in Fort, but it was way at the beginning. Fort was a language that was uh, used uh, by the first people who were into interactive, this kind of robot uh, <coughs> development in music, uh, like George Lewis, uh, Daniel Scheidt, a Canadian uh, uh, composer programmer. Um, and, uh, I resisted a long time against using uh, Max MSP until I had to uh, give lectures in South Africa and I had to, uh, to learn the students uh, how to, to use it. So I, I, was, uh, I, I made sure that I was always a week ahead of the students. And then I said, well, the best way to, to, to learn to program is simply to, to uh, start writing a program. I mean, that's, uh, that's the best thing you can do. I can, can remember uh, uh, Joe Ryan, he, I, I met him at the conservatory in The Hague. And he, I said to him, yeah, I would like to write computer programs, but I need someone who can do that for me because I can't. And then Joe said, uh, Joel said uh, uh, no, of course you can. You are intelligent. You can do it. Uh, just, uh, just have a. You should first have an idea, and then you have to start and, uh, writing. So that's what I did. I only, I worked for, uh, for three months. I did nothing else than writing in in Ford, and then, uh, then I had the basics in my fingers. Yeah, you said uh, sometimes the machine gets bored with you. Do you ever get irritated with the machine? Yeah, constantly, and especially, it's especially it's me, because uh, I, I I think this was a rather uh, a rather nice performance. But uh, because I wrote the program myself, uh, I know what it's going to do. So preferably, I like other people to play with it, because when when I play with it myself, I I have too too much pre knowledge. I know what. What's in it? So I, I, I sometimes start to start anticipating on the on the program, and then it, of course it doesn't do what I want it to do, <laughs> which is quite irritating. So, but now I haven't played the piece for a whole year, so I think that's quite good. I shouldn't practice it. <laughs> and it goes. But it makes the decisions on what you are playing. So if yeah. you play, for example, long note, it will always. Uh, select a certain algorithm, or is it no, also is no? It also can variation? also go against me. Sorry? It can also go against me. Okay. Go in, into a kind of counterpoint mo mode where, when I play the long notes, he, he's playing the sort of solo line on, on top. Okay. How is that decided? Hmm? How is that decided during performance? Uh, well, for that he, it looks at what what I have done before, and what he, it thinks that it is necessary. <laughs> so what but it but it's it's uh, of course it, it, the program the way it works. It's you don't have full uh, direct control over it. So sometimes I I don't most of the time I don't know what kind of decisions it's taking itself. I can analyze because I know the program quite well. But, but 
there are no random factors in there, or is there? No, there are random factors. But they are. Uh, it, it's more on the on the side to to get it more human. To, uh, I mean, but if you don't, if you have it very strict, then it's. I think it gets very uh, pretty uh, bored. Yeah. So it's nice. But, but if you play, for example, uh, twice the same piece on your saxophone, yeah. it will perform. It will be completely different. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because already at the beginning, it has to choose how to start, yeah. and it doesn't know anything of me, and I don't know anything of the computer. So uh, it can it can be that he that it chooses something completely different to, to start, and then already the whole piece <laughs> going to be totally different. So Luke would that would mean that in Max you you had a, a random of two random elements, for example, you the, the random uh, choice could be choose that uh, random algorithm or that random algorithm, and that that gives you. Yeah. The, Already at, at the beginning, of course, yeah. it needs to have some yeah, of randomness. Course, right, but, because, yeah. but, it, but it can then. Uh, what, what I use in the program is that it starts with a. Uh, you, 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 you can, uh, uh, for instance, start with a little bit of randomness at the beginning. Like that's probably what improvisers also do when they, when they improvise together. They, uh, uh, they start to do something in between. So. <laughs> They uh, they can can uh, it's not that tricky to uh, to move to either to one thing or to the other thing, and so it has uh, in many uh, moments it also uses a second uh, opinion kind of thing. So it starts doing something because there has something to happen, but then it uh, uh, it, it can change its conclusions uh, in, in, in a few seconds. Or for instance, if if you start. Uh, uh, an interesting thing is when, when I start playing, then uh, when I play with another musician, it probably al it already sees on how I play, whether I'm going to play a long note or a short note, because I do that in a different way. But the computer can only tell, it's so stupid, it can only tell uh, after about two seconds whether it was a long note or so. So you, ca you can never, at the beginning, it, uh, it, it has to keep it <laughs> somewhere in between, and then later on think, okay, this this is probably a, pe a part where the saxophone player plays long notes. Um, does this also work with polyphonic input? No, uh, this, no, this one not. And these machines are still not so good developed. Uh, the, the analyzing things. Uh, through software, you can come. No, but then it will also. Yeah. Well, if you would skip the, the, the soundtrack, you will use, let's say, a MIDI keyboard. Yeah, no, it's not made for, the, for that. I, I, I write these programs uh, from my own uh, uh, practice as a musician. So, this is, I play a, a single note instrument. I, uh, I use that as, a, as an input. But as I said, usually it works better with other players. <laughs> that microphone doesn't hear what the piano is producing? No. Yeah, yeah you can put the microphone in. It will st start playing. Playing with himself. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really great to have this discussion. Maybe you can go on in the pause. Uh, coffee, tea. Um, because we need to sort of move on to get the whole program in this afternoon. Thank you, Luke. is a MIDI controllable piano, you can also use other controllers, as we call it, to play the instrument. And uh, for that I will use a popular game device, the Wii controller, today, and a piece of software 
that I created called Junction. Junction is a tool that allows you to connect all kinds of, you might say, real-world sensors to it, and then that information can be processed and translated into media information or OSC, for people who know about OSC, which is a bit more sophisticated. But uh, So it allows you to use uh, any kind of uh, game controller, if you want, the, the Wii Remote as well, um, to control your MIDI synthesizer, uh, your sequence software, whatever you're using. And uh, so what I've done is um, I am connected to the computer, and this is wireless with, with Bluetooth, and the computer is connected to a MIDI interface which is lying on the floor here and there's a cable going to the piano and basically that's the whole setup. On the screen, I'm not going to explain what you can do uh, with the junction, I mean, that would take a real workshop for that, but uh, what I will do is I will build uh, quickly a little sort of piano controller from this Wii remote. <coughs> On the left side of the screen here, you see basically all the sensors. If I push the switch, I get information, and there's a built-in uh, uh, accelerometer, so I can shape a little thing. And what you do in Junction, you create a so-called patch, which is dragging this to here. And now I can play. <coughs> so by pressing button B. I'm sending a meeting message to the piano, and as you can hear, it works. Um, of course, it's kind of limited now. <laughs> and uh, it might be a nice idea if I could uh, change the pitch. And uh, since there is this accelerometer in here, actually three axes, X, Y, and Z. Uh, what I can do is uh, say, okay, let's use the X to determine which pitch I'm playing. And for that, what I will do is I will store the information into some variable. And as you can see, this is updated now, and I will call this pitch. All right. Now, in here, this is a so-called action. This determines what is happening with my sensor information that is coming in. And as you can see, it sends out a note event which is now going to the MIDI port, but uh, I could also use the uh, quick time synthesizer. Doesn't sound like this. A little bit better. More, more portable. Um, and what you also see is that the note number now is fixed to 48. And what I can do is say, let's use variable and pitch. I don't really know when I have to push the button to get the right note. 
So there's a little trick what you can do in Junction uh, for this information where we basically say store pitch I can say change the data via a table. And this allows me to map the incoming sensor data, which you see in the bottom. You can clearly see I, I'm not getting the whole range of the table. But by saying auto scale, now I can really reach now low notes. <laughs> The notes that I can uh, actually uh, play are bigger, the, the range is bigger than actually the piano has. So if I want to do this right, I should probably go from 96 to 20 or something. Good. that you are able to create with MIDI. Um, you can use the tables to do that. Of course, I can also create a table that uh, um, plays discrete pitches. So I could create tables that have different scales if I really want to play different scales. But uh, for now, let's just uh, use this. Um, the other thing that you notice, of course, is that yeah, I press the button and it's just loud. It's, it's on off. It's an organ key. I could also say, let's use the acceleration Y, this one, to determine how uh, loud I will play the key. And for that, I will call it store. store the data into a new variable. I will also use a table to scale this. And do I want this to be loud or do I want this to be loud? That's a good question. It's up to you. <coughs> up. Yeah, for a lot of people it would say up is loud. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, mostly I use this for loud. Okay, we want up for loud. This is up. I say invert, auto scale, and we're done. And this now is stored into loudness. And here, where I'm playing the note, I could now say for the variable velocity, which is actually how hard you hit the key, that could be the loudness or so, I could use loudness. So, what was it? Up is loud. So it is. I will play the note twice, once I press the button and once I release it. But of course, I can do something about that, otherwise I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I call this one play note, and I say, only respond to when I press the switch. And now I will duplicate this action, and I will call it stop note, and it should be connected to the switch. 
switch off, and then the velocity is zero. I copy this one. Because if you look here, you can see that this one, which is supposed to stop the note, is stopping note 50 while I played note 52. And the main reason is that um, play note uses pitch, and stop note uses pitch and a variable. But if I play a note, as you can see, I can still change the pitch. So it means when I stop, I'm stopping the wrong note. So I need to fix that. That means I need to copy pitch into some new variable, which I will call pitch. Stop note, I will use play pitch. The result of the switch I will store in this variable. And you can see it's either 0 or 127. And then if I go back to the store pitch, which is connected to my X accelerometer, I rename it just to make sure that I know later what it was all about. I can say generate output if the variable scratch equals 127. And what it should do then is generate node events um, with the data coming from the accelerometer and the velocity should come from loudness. cannot play uh, 200 notes per second. You can try to hit them, but the, you will basically not get enough. So 
So, as you can see, well, within the 10 minutes that I'm uh, talking now, I already have a little piano control. And so what I want to do now is open uh, a little configuration file that I already prepared and uh, show you what you can do. This one uh, is using scales, and let me see if it works. scales and depending on if I start like this or if I start like this Possibilities to uh, to use external world data because Junction not only allows you to use uh, the game controllers, but you can also even use MIDI to process it. So the the piano also sends out MIDI. Am I right about yes. that? Yes. Yeah. So what you could do is send out the MIDI to the computer, process it and what you're playing will be processed and be, be fed back to the piano, if you want that. Um, another thing that I can use as an input is uh, video tracking. And I want to uh, quickly demonstrate that. Uh, and audio, actually. As well. For now, I will use the video. What I can 
can do uh, with the video tracking injunction is I can extract what is called the so-called object out of either a color that's being recognized or, for example, movement. And with movement, that's the one that I want to use now. The rectangle is the object. And in the window behind this window, you can see that my object gives me a number of different uh, variables, like the X position and the Y position sensor, and if it's detected, yes or no. <coughs> so I can actually virtually play a camera. So let's do that. I want to use the Y position to store my data in in a variable, actually velocity is fine. And I want to use the X position to play the notes. And since I don't want to have hanging notes, <laughs> I want to make sure that if I stop moving, it sends an all notes off message. This is the quick and dirty trick of making sure that no notes <coughs> will play. Three, switch off. Three, four, one. Uh, this one should play the notes. I'm not going to rename this. There you only get one object, but uh, if you can also do uh, uh, color tracking, and then uh, if you would have uh, multiple colors, they can all play their own notes. Yeah. And of course, you can also combine this. I mean, I can do the movement tracking combined with this, that, uh, whatever. It's it's easy to create chords. <laughs> I mean, if you want to do that, mm -hmm. uh, I could probably. I, well, probably I can definitely make a, a setup that if I press one button, I play all 88 keys. Is it actually possible to consciously hit a certain notes like this, or is it because you're always like this, doing like this? You know? With the video tracking? Yeah, or yeah, at all? Uh, practice, practice, practice. Okay. <laughs> 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 like the real piano world. Uh, I will probably sit over there. <laughs> no, but I mean, the, all the systems have their limitations, of course. I mean, I cannot play big chordal pieces on a violin. So, there's, if you want to, to, to do that, I would probably make a kind of a control interface that allows me to have precise control of the pitches that I'm playing. But uh, again, it's, it's, it, it also, also with this stuff, once you've created your new instrument, 
it means if you practice a lot, you can really become a master with it. More questions? Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming. About uh, the possibilities of it, and um, I immediately started like thinking about MIDI strings and all these things that the pianist can do and the instrument can, uh, this instrument might be able to do. And uh, well, as already Frank said, it's it's very limited in the, in that sense of of being able to um, recognize or or pro or um, process uh, MIDI information or very fast notes. So um, when I came to Stein to work with it in a period of five days, I sort of um, discovered a complete new instrument. You know, it's not it's not a midified piano, but a bunch of other things that the instrument has, and I'm also full of limitations. So my idea was to sort of um, do something with the with the artifacts of of the instrument, like uh, all these weird noises that the instrument has, or or um, the mechanism of, of the instrument that the piano doesn't have, or or if it has, it's not able to produce it in a, in a way as the disclavier can do it. So um, so yeah, that was basically the the idea. And just to say a few examples, for example, uh, in the in the beginning, uh, you hear the just the keys because the instrument has this silent mode. So you can also put it in a way that it doesn't produce any pitch, but just the, the movement of the keys. But it also has this very, for me, very nice sound. When it holds one note, it has a, it has a sound that, that the machine produces this kind of high tone. And what I did is just to put a microphone there and amplify that in the first half of the, well, the first movement, sort of movement of the piece. Um, such as that, also, um, I have uh, some sensors here uh, that the pianist is uh, using. And what they do is basically send the same note, but then they are, they are changing the, the velocity, the, the sort of uh, loudness of the notes. So you have from the, just the note of the, the noise of the mechanism to the, to the note. And, um, Another feature of the instrument that I found interesting and different from a piano is that uh, it can also send MIDI, not just get MIDI, but send MIDI, as Frank said already. And um, so I wanted to use that feature in not in a kind of sampler way that a MIDI piano will have or, or a, any other keyboard with a MIDI function, but more to um, just trigger very simple sounds, very simple electronics that still will have some kind of connection to the to the instrument. So. Um, so the piece is basically full of these kind of of, uh, of uh, processes and, and uh, noises produced by by the by the instrument. Um, I don't know if you have any question, comment. So there was no digital effect really involved. This was all just pure piano. Yeah. Yeah, there was no, I mean, there's just three noises or, or sounds that are electronic, sine waves, pulses, and noise, and that's all triggered with a, with a keyboard. But I don't use more, more than that. I, in the last part, I used these uh, little speakers here, and the instrument plays a note, the, uh, and the same frequency comes out of the speaker, so she's able to touch the strings and get different harmonics, and, and different sounds. I mean, actually, when I discovered that, I, I thought I could have made a piece just with that because you can really explore lots of sounds with with that uh, with that process. Okay, so I would like to give the chance to Sarah <laughs> to say some things. Um, so I was just going to make uh, a couple of quick observations about um, Hugo's piece. And um, I think firstly, I found the last section with the senses um, kind of really interesting in the way that it combined human expressivity and machine capability. So I was kind of able to you know, really nuance the lines, but of course the, the piano is doing the hard work of playing lots and lots of repeated notes. 
So that's kind of quite a neat um, example of, I thought, how you know, it was a kind of nice approach that he took to the instrument. Um, there's a couple of bits um, which are perhaps slightly less intuitive but interesting as a kind of um, mental um, kind of problem, I suppose, to propose to the performer. Um, I just I hope you don't mind, Hugo. I can actually ask you if it's okay to show uh, the projector's not on. Anymore. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, I'll show you the pictures on the computer after. Um, but basically, in the first section that I'm playing, uh, the the way that I play the top G, um, the dynamic that I play it at doesn't control the dynamic of the electronics. It actually controls the speed of the electronics. So if I play very softly, then it will play just crotchets. And if I play a bit louder, it plays quavers. Um, and then sort of counterintuitively, the left pedal, the unicorder, controls the dynamics of the electronics. So. It's also inverted so that when the unicorder is at its lowest, that's the loudest dynamic. Um, so that you have a situation where you're looking at the page and you see PP and FF, and your hand has to play PP to create the crotchets, but your left foot is all the way down to make them very loud. So there's this kind of interesting mental situation, you know, where everything is kind of counterintuitive. And it's not because Hugo doesn't know what he's doing. It's kind of a, quite a deliberate um, situation where... For me, it reminded me of something like playing the beginning of Safete under Seren by Nono. You have this kind of clinical approach which somehow um, encompasses a kind of electronic world. And I think it's quite interesting the way that when I first get to the instrument, I'm really kind of quite robotic like it is, you know, having to release the pedal in a sudden way. So that's quite interesting. Um, I thought, just very quickly, in terms of notation, um, it's always a good idea to just put something in front of a performer and see what they say, because I had quite, we had quite a lot of discussion about notation and how best to represent things visually. Um, so, you know, simple things like the control of the left pedal, um, I kind of reference things like the stock album, Tavia Stuck, where he has very um, succinct ways of showing different pedaling controls. Um, then a couple of quick related kind of tips or experiences that I've done. I do a lot of stuff with piano electronics. Um, I happen to have a device with me which I thought was relevant to share. Um, it's really big. They don't like putting it in taxis in Amsterdam, I've discovered. Um, and uh, this is called a piano bar, which is not a smoke-filled room with a jazz pianist. Um, it's actually... I just got it because I'm playing a gig tomorrow with it. Um, but it's basically... Uh, a sort of sensor strip and you stand it at the back of the keyboard and then it means that any piano in the world can become a MIDI sending piano. So it's sort of half a disc clavier, if you like. Um, Is that the move one? It's move, yeah. Anyway, it's loads cheaper than a disc clavier. But it's only for MIDI sending, it's only MIDI out. It's only from sending MIDI. Exactly, so it only sends MIDI out. Um, so it can't do all the fancy tricks of you know, playing the piano for you, um, which Frank, I thought you did amazingly, frankly. I'd love to. Uh, I, I want to give you Hugo's piece and get you to play it on the Wii, that'd be nice. Um, so, but it's useful if you don't want, you know, the piano to play itself, or even if you just want to experiment with, you know, an acoustic piano and different things you can do. Um, stuff that I've done um, is if you play the keys silently, which you can do, of course, if you just press them gently. Um, and then having the MIDI wired up to, um, for example, some speakers that uh, Hugo gave me, and I put them on the strings so that I was sending kind of different sorts of sounds straight to the strings, but still controlling it as a pianist. So things like that are quite nice to play with. Um, another tip, which I had a very romantic picture of, but you can just imagine it, um, was again sort of building on what Frank was saying about expressivity um, in physical forms. Um, I did a piece very recently with um, sensors which were kind of reading muscle activity, so kind of tension. Um, and that was a piece by Atta Tanaka, who used to be the artistic director here, actually. Um, and there's a couple of examples on my website just to kind of throw some ideas out there of what, how you might get a pianist to interact. So with that, I'm controlling samples and playing the piano. And it kind of creates quite an interesting physical conversation, I suppose. 
Um, then very finally, uh, I'm totally interested in pianos, of course, generally, but also in terms of what their future might be. And it's been really exciting being at Stein. Thank you for having me. Um, and what's amazing is that there's a piano here at all, because of course, normally, <laughs> there isn't one. And, uh, you know, a lot of that's to do with space. So I'm quite interested in challenging the piano. I've built a, a sort of vertical thing that's about six foot tall, and the strings are here, and the keyboard's here. And the idea is um, not so much that you can store it in a cupboard, but that's a kind of handy um, offset, but um, that you can play the strings and the keys at the same time. Um, so I'm in the process of building that. And a quick plug, next year I'll be doing a competition um, in the UK for people who like to build their own instruments to come and build things that don't resemble a piano necessarily, but maybe take some element of a piano. So look out for that, and hopefully Stein might be sort of involved in that somehow. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to say.